three new tracks for Assetto Corsa Competizione. That's pretty much the deal with the American track pack, which should be available when this goes live. There's the much-loved Watkins Glen, the love-it-or-hate-it circuit of the Americas, and the world-famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course. As you would expect, there's also some new GT World Challenge America liveries and some small physics tweaks as well. So let's get into the details, starting with... Watkins Glen is undoubtedly one of the world's great racing venues, and somehow it always manages to translate well into racing sims, providing fantastic racing in pretty much whatever type of car you want to throw at it. The implementation in ACC is, as you would expect, a bit of a looker. It oozes atmosphere, and it's a treat to drive. Of course, it's plenty detailed and has that all-important vibe factor, and it does feel like a place that actually exists, which is something that some sims do struggle with. But it's the driving here that really matters. The Glen features smooth modern tarmac, replicating the circuit as it is in recent years after the much-talked-about ground-up repaving in 2015. GT World Challenge America uses the full boot layout, which adds in a couple of really fantastic corners that run through undulating terrain, and a couple of less fantastic ones. You can't win them all. This circuit is perfect for GT3 cars, with plenty of mid-speed and fast corners to keep you on your toes, and only one or two tight technical ones to disrupt the flow. Turn 1 is one of the greats, with a downhill braking zone and the widest exit curb you're likely to find. And the track limits here are pretty forgiving too, as they are in real life, and overall I'd describe the track limits as very intuitive, but we'll come back to that subject a little later in the video. Once you step out of the GT3s, things get a bit more exciting. For example, the run up the hill through the S's doesn't really trouble the big GTs, but with less aero-dependent machinery, the fast sweeping corners and seemingly magnetic barriers are a bit more of a challenge. GT4 cars go well here, but I think the Porsche Cup cars are where it's at for the Glen in ACC. These are genuinely immense fun and genuinely scary. Of course, there's plenty of fast stuff to keep the back end moving around in true Porsche fashion. And add to that a few really tricky traction zones, which serve to remind you that a cup car doesn't have traction control, and of course the engine is at the swingy end of the car as well. At the risk of getting into superlatives, if there's a better venue to drive this car in ACC, I've yet to find it. And that's a factor of the Glen's old school cool. Obviously, we're a bit lacking in traditional circuits for ACC, since the European calendar of the GTWC tends to visit FIA Grade 1 venues that are designed to accommodate Formula 1. There's the British GT venues, of which I'm a big fan, but the Glen really ticks every box in this regard. Great flow, grass runoff, close barriers and narrow tarmac make this driver's track a really valuable addition to the sim, and I'm sure it's going to be immensely popular. Circuit of the Americas is almost certainly the most divisive racetrack to feature in the pack. Some love the flowing, sweeping nature of the circuit, broken up by complex technical corners and elevation changes that are straight out of Roller Coaster Tycoon. Others, well, not so much. And the wide tarmac expanse, punctuated by white lines, draws the ire of many a race fan, and that translates worryingly well into ACC. Track limits are going to be a big talking point, particularly through the left-right repeat sector one. Your racing instinct tells you to take more curb, but the limit sensors say otherwise. As far as I can tell, it's a case of stay inside the white lines, with the exception of a few of the wider curbs, which are a little bit more forgiving. But that's very much a feature of modern race venues that chase the prestige of Formula One, where the track limits are… well, yeah, let's not get into that. Of course, if the system wasn't as strict, it would be ripe for abuse, particularly in Sector 1 at Cota. A more forgiving system that encourages a lot more curb would result in a series of corners effectively iron smooth, reducing the challenge and making a mockery of the whole thing. So it is fairly frustrating, at least to begin with, but once you learn the limits, it's really not a big deal. Though you will probably have a shouty moment or two while you're testing the water. Now that messy business is behind us, I'd like to highlight some of the standout stuff in ACC. First of all, there's the rather unique feel to the road surface. Being a modern circuit, you'd expect the tarmac would be bowling green smooth, and it is in some places, but the famously problematic nature of Cota's tarmac has been captured well in ACC. This is most noticeable around the parts of the circuit where they created artificial elevation changes, for example, in the run-up to Turn 1. It feels like the tarmac has literally rippled as it slid down the hill, which is very immersive. Now, as we know, this is something that's plagued Cota over the years, so it's something that you'd expect replicated here. 
and it certainly adds a bit more of a challenge to what would otherwise be a couple of fairly straightforward corners, as well as that all-important realism business and the immersion that it brings. Speaking of which, Kota really does look the part. And there's lots to go and look at if you're the sort of person that wanders around in free camera mode. But for everyone else, the driving experience is great once you get a handle on the track limits. The racing is a little bit of a mixed bag though. GT3s understandably excel here, making use of all that aero through the fast and demanding Sector 1. And then Sector 2 obviously suits these cars the best as well, being so very, very quick. That being said, the tight complex at the beginning of Sector 3 is... Uh, well, it's a bit Mickey Mouse, but of course there's really not a lot Kunos could do about that. Thankfully, you're rewarded by the excellent turns 16, 17 and 18 right after, which really are one fast flowing corner that requires commitment and precision to make it through cleanly and quickly. The aero on the GT3s isn't enough to allow you to keep your foot in and the corner tightens in the middle, so there's plenty to keep you entertained. As for the other types of car, for me, they're not as well suited to Kota. The GT4s feel a bit slow on some parts of the circuit, and on the blanketless cold tires, Sector 1 is a struggle. Normally, I actually get more enjoyment driving the GT4s, but this is a rare example where I think the faster cars are just better suited, at, at least for me. The Porsche Cup cars, though, are decent fun, as they are everywhere, but they are hard work, as is the 488 Challenge, which really doesn't have the front end for this place, in my opinion. But that's just me, and I do genuinely think the GT3s are very well suited and should provide some great racing, though how close the cars can follow through Sector 1 remains to be seen, as I suspect aero push may well be a significant factor here. Now, I should probably say that I'm, I'm actually a fan of Kota and I've enjoyed driving it in other sims. I can understand why Sector 1's frustrating for many, but it's never been an issue for me. As far as modern race venues go, it's actually near the top of my list. It's nice and technical with some really rewarding corners to boot. And now, for me at least, it's a strong addition to ACC. The last of the circuits in the pack is easily the most famous, though very much for different reasons. And the importance of this venue clearly wasn't lost on the team at Kunos, who have put significant work, i.e. time, into all of the buildings, track furniture and other assets, giving this place a real vibe, and it looks pretty magic at night too. The Grand Prix road course layout used by GT World Challenge America makes use of the old 180 degree loop at turn 6, which some other series quite wisely skip. And then there's the chicane just before you rejoin the banking towards the end of the lap at what would normally be turn 1 of the speedway layout. While the speedway circuit is heavily developed, the infield layout kind of has its own vibe, which is frankly a, a bit stark for the most part. And then all of a sudden you're back on the oval, going the wrong way on a busy, massive modern circuit. There's titanic grandstands filled with a GT-appropriate crowd and a pit lane that's longer than some runways. The dissonance between the two parts of the circuit is a bit odd really, but it does look fantastic and you can really feel the importance of the place as you round the final turn and you're presented with all of that history peeling into view before your eyes. Adding to the very distinctive nature of the two different parts of the circuit is the track surface itself. The oval, as you would presume, has been paved with tarmac by a consummate professional that understands the importance of keeping four wheels on the ground at 230 plus miles an hour. The infield, however, is pretty bouncy in places, which coupled with the tight technical nature of many of the corners, provides for a driving experience that, well, I'll be honest with you, it's not my cup of tea. I find the Indy road course lacking any sort of flow. It's just one frustrating, clumsy corner after another, and you never really feel like you're able to let the car loose. And the GT3s feel a bit quick for the infield section, if I'm honest, which isn't something I find myself saying very often. On the other hand, GT4s suit the GP layout a lot better, in my opinion, and their reduced cornering speeds and less aero dependence should provide for better racing than their faster brethren, though on the main straight, they do feel a little pedestrian. Sadly, my go-to pick-up-and-drive car of late didn't suit Indy all that well at all. The M2CS, which is usually an engaging drive, just didn't click with me here, which is a real shame, but it's rare that a circuit suits all cars equally. Of course, none of that is Kunos' fault, and if you get yourself set up with a car with a nice pointy front end and the right sort of mentality to approach the circuit correctly, it can be very rewarding. And thanks to the big long straight bit and the lack of any real fast corners, it does feel like close racing should be very possible at Indy as well. So maybe I just need to get over my infield phobia. Notably, the pack includes only three circuits from the possible seven on the 2021 GT World Challenge America calendar, with Sebring, VIR, Road America and Sonoma not making the cut. Which, let's be honest, is a massive shame. 
So I spoke to Aris from Kunos about the reasoning behind the circuit selection. As you know, creating a circuit from scratch is difficult and takes a lot of time, both in terms of securing the license, obtaining data and assets, photos, scans, etc., and creating the actual track and implementing it in the sim. So you have to choose carefully from a combination of availability and licenses and data, real life relevance, time constraints, history, market preference, and of course, personal preference. So reading between the lines, I would expect that the ever present complexities of licensing play a big role in the circuit selection. The guys at Kunos are all racers themselves, and I'm sure they would have loved to have included all seven venues, if it were possible and, well, commercially viable. And maybe that's a big factor as well. The DLC for ACC is incredibly inexpensive compared to some of the other sims on the market. So there's an argument that a pack with seven circuits with seven licensing fees, assuming they're granted, seven sets of data, some of which may not have actually been available, and of course, all of the work hours necessary may well not have fit into Kunos's pricing model. I, I say wildly speculating. So while I'm disappointed that I don't get to take on VIR or bounce around Sebring, for me at least, the decision is understandable. Now, Nordschleifer when? 